Uh, it's important uh, that we should understand that the center theorem cannot always come in a standard position like this one. Yeah, this is the arc. This arc subtends this angle at the center, subtends that one at the circumference. So the one at the center is two times that one at the circumference. Even if we've got a center here and we're talking about this angle here, this angle here, remember this is the arc, this is the arc. This arc goes to the center, the same arc goes to the circumference. So this angle here is two times bigger than that one. So you must be able to notice the center theorem even if it comes in this particular way. This angle here is two times the angle at the circumference. The one at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Now let us look at the problem that was taken from uh, the supplementary exams of March 2010. This was question 8.2. We're given, now watch here, we're given that O is the center. Once they say O is the center, I think of the theorems that has something to do with the center, like the center theorem. Check whether we'd have a diameter there. In this particular case, remember this is not a diameter because the center is here. This line does not pass through the center. Don't make that mistake. The center is here. This is a radius. This is a radius. Ah, this angle because to that one. Those are the things that we know in this particular diagram. O is the center, I think of the center theorem. I see this theorem here, there. I can see it already. Let's move on. Lm is equal to mn. Lm is equal to m. We are given. Remember, if this line is equal to this one, that means that this angle here will be equal to this angle here. Because this angle will be equal. Angles opposite equal sides are also equal. So the angles that I put the dots there, they'll be the same angle. They are equal. What else do I know? L O N is 100. L O N. This angle here is 100 degrees. Right. <clears throat> What's the first question that we're looking for? We're looking for the size of angle L M N. L M N. We're looking for this one in blue. We're looking for this one. This whole angle here. Ah. That angle is at the circumference. You look at this angle here. Do you see this angle here? Where is this angle? It is at the center. This is the arc. This is the whole arc. It goes to the center. The same arc goes to the circumference. Hence, the one at the center is two times bigger than the one at the circumference. So that becomes important. That becomes crucial. Do I know this angle? No. Can I be able to find this angle? Yes. How do I find it? I go to my grade 8. I know the types of angles. We've got six types of angles. So this one that starts from here and goes around up to the same position is called revolution. It is equal to 360 degrees. So if this one is 100, then angle O will be what? 260 degrees. So we know that angle O Let's call this O1. Only O1 will be equal to 260 degrees. Because, okay, let, let me just do it proper. We know that angle O1, this one, angle O1, plus angle 100 is equal to 360 degrees. What, what is the reason? Revolution. Right, now watch here. O1 plus 100 is equal to 360. So it's 100 plus what? That will give me 360. So O1 in this particular case will be equal to 260 degrees. So we know O1 is 260. But we're not looking for O1 in this particular case. We're looking for M1 plus 2. LMN. LMN. These two angles. Remember this one is two times bigger than that one. Let's write that fact down. We know that uh, this angle here, O1, this one, O1 is equals to 2 times LMN, right? The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So O1 is 2 times LMN. What are we looking for in this particular case? We're looking for LMN. We're just looking for that angle here, LMN. Do we know what is O1? Yes, we know O1. So O1, where there's O1, I push into 60, is equal to uh, 2 LMN. We divide by 2 on both sides. So therefore, LMN will be divided by 2, divided by 2, 2 into 2, 
goes once, two into six goes two six goes three times, two into zero goes zero. So this is the value of uh, angle LMN. If you look at 8.2.2, we're looking for the value of angle LKM. L K M. We're just looking for this angle here. We want to find the value of this particular angle. Remember what I said to you earlier on. Euclidean geometry is all about theorems. Don't look at the complicated diagram. Just look for the theorem you can find there. I can see this theorem there. Look at, look at this one. If I have something like this, I've got this arc or chord. It goes there to the circumference. The same arc goes to this circumference. I know therefore that this angle is the same as this one because they are formed by the same arc or chord. We call that angles in the same segment. And I can see this theorem there. Look at this one. If you look, use this as the arc or chord, look at this chord. It goes there. The same chord goes here. So in other words, if angle K are two ticks, this one will be two ticks as well. But this one is also equals to that. So all these are the same. All those three angles are the same in actual fact. Now watch here. We are looking for that angle, but we know that this angle subtended by this arc or chord, it is equal to this one. So if you can find this angle, we we'll definitely know that ang other angle. Number two. We also know that this angle is equal to that one. Remember, we've just calculated this angle here. Yeah, we've just calculated this angle here to be 130. This angle is 130. But these two angles are the same. And we know from grade 8 that this is a triangle. And this angle plus this angle plus this angle, what does it give us? It gives us 360. We know that angle... Uh, we want this angle because this angle is the same as that one. This one is the same as that one. If we can find this angle, we definitely know that angle. So let's look for this angle. But this angle is the same as that one because we are given that this side is the same as this side. Therefore, these angles are the same. We also know this angle, it is 130. We've just calculated it there. But we know that angle this one plus that one plus this one will give us what? 360. We know that angle uh, this one angle M, let me call it angle M, plus angle L1, plus angle N1 is equal to 180 degrees. Why is it so? Sum of interior angles of the triangle. Sum of interior angles of a triangle. Right. Do we know what is M? Yes, we know what is M. M is, 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 is 130. But these two are the same. Instead of writing L1 plus N1, if I'm looking for this one, I'm looking for N1, you can call this L1 as uh, N1 as well. So it's, so it's plus N1 plus N1 is 2N1 is equal to 180 degrees. So these two are the same because they are angles opposite equal sides. Right? Uh, take 130 that side. We're going to have 2 angle N1 equals to uh, 180 minus 130 equals to 50 degrees. 2 times what will give me 50? 2n is equal to 50. It means 2 times what will give me 50? 2 times what will give me 50? 2 times 25. So n1 is standing in the place of 25. 25 degrees. Ah, we know that this angle now is 25 degrees. Now watch here. If you take this arc LM or chord LM, this angle is the same as that angle that we are looking for. We are now saying, uh, now watch here, we are looking for LKM, LKM, let's start with it. LKM is the same as this angle here, LKM, this angle is the same as N1, is equal to N1, why? Subtended, subtended, subtend. By arc, which acts LM. So these two are subtended by the same arc. But do we know what is N1? Yes, we know what is N1. Therefore, ULKM is also equals to 
25 degrees. That's how you go about solving these great 11 problems. Whether there are circles around, that's what, this is what you do. You just look for that. I want us to move on and look at, at one or two problems that we, we come out in grade 12.